Ben kalırım. When a car travels without skidding around an unbanked curb, the static frictional force between the tires and the road provides the centripetal force. The reliance on friction can be eliminated completely for a given speed. However, if the curb is banked at an angle theta relative to the horizontal, much in the same way that a plane is banked while making a turn. So in getting the centripetal force in circular motion along a, a bank curves, we have this formula of centripetal force is equal to the normal force times sine theta. As we can see in the figure P, the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. That's why it makes an angle of theta relative to the um, vertical. This theta is the, the magnitude of this theta or angle is also equal with, the, with this angle of the surface with the horizontal. And since we are dealing with centripetal force, and it's always directed at the center of the circular motion or the circular path, meaning the horizontal or the horizontal component of the normal force is our centripetal force, which is equivalent to the sine theta of the normal force. wherein this force is equal to the mass times the square root of the velocity divided by the radius. Same with our centripetal force in uniform circular motion we have discussed earlier. And to get theta or the angle between the surface and the horizontal, we have this formula of square root of the velocity divided by the radius times the gravitational pull, which is 9.8 to 1 meter per second squared or 32.2 feet per second squared. So in dealing with bank curves, these two formulas is what we're going to work with. So let's have an example. A Daytona 500 is the major event of the NASCAR National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing season. It is held at the Daytona International Speedway in Daytona, Florida. The turns in this oval track make a maximum radius at the top of 216 meter and are banked stiffly with angle of 31 degrees. Suppose this maximum radius turns were frictionless. At what speed would the cars have to travel around them? So the given R radius of 216 meter and angle of 31 degrees and we are looking for the velocity using this formula tangent theta equal to square root of the velocity over radius times gravitational pull, we can solve for velocity, which is equal now to square root of radius times gravitational pull times the tangent theta. Subject value, we have radius of 216 meter times gravitational pull of 9.81 meter per second squared times tangent 31 degrees. Therefore, our velocity is
35. Ah, sorry. I made a mistake in calculating. Okay. Okay. So, therefore, our velocity is... I repeat, 35.68 meter per second. So again, always, um, always make sure that your calculator is in degrees. You can see that at the upper portion of the monitor of your calculator, if it has letter D in the screen, therefore it is in degrees. So we can have tangent 31 degrees. But if, if it has R written in the monitor, it is in region. Therefore, you have to convert this 31 degrees into region. Okay, so let's have another example problem. On a bank race track, the smallest circular path on which cars can move has a radius of 112 meter well the, well, well <laughs> sorry well the largest has a radius of 165 meter as a drawing illustrate the height of the outer wall is 18 meter find the smallest speed at which the car can move on this track without relying on friction so we're looking for the speed and speed is equal to square root of r g tangent theta. So what's, our, what's the value of our radius and theta? So first, let's get angle theta. So angle theta is equal to, this is our angle theta, equal to r tangent 18 meter over the difference between the radius, which is 53 meter. Therefore, our angle is 18.76 degrees. And since we are looking for the smallest speed at which the car can move along this track, so we will consider the smallest radius. As we can see in our um, formula, this B, uh, the velocity squared, is equal to radius times gravitational pull times tangent theta, and the velocity is um, directly proportional, uh, not, not directly, but proportional with the radius, meaning as the radius increases, our velocity increases. Otherwise, if the radius is decreased, therefore our velocity is decreases. So we can find the smallest radius or the smallest speed at the lower part of the track, which has a radius of 112 meter. Therefore, our velocity is equal to square root of 112 meter times gravitational pull of 9.81 meter per second squared times tangent 18.76 degrees. Therefore, our velocity or speed or the magnitude of the velocity rather is equal to Nineteen point thirty two meter per second. Okay, so let's check your understanding by solving this problem and write your answer in the comment section.